Hello, and welcome to our Wednesday webinar from the International Centre for Sustainable Carbon. My name is Rebecca, and I'm part of the communications team here. Our monthly webinars are based on our technical reports, which are available from our website, www.sustainable-carbon.org. Residents of member countries and employees of sponsoring organisations can download our reports at no charge after a one-off registration on the website. The subject for today's webinar is the prospects for coal in agriculture presented by Dr. Ian Reid. Please type in any questions in the question box as we go along and we will answer them at the end of this webinar. Over to you, Ian. Okay, thank, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, yes, uh, uh, welcome to today's, today's web webinar. Um, uh, and we're going to talk about how you can use uh, coal and coal products in, uh, in the agricultural sector. And, um, and, and we'll look at some of the uh, issues that um, are, are facing agriculture at, uh, at the moment and, and how coal fits into that. So uh, uh, if we just look at what's happening in uh, uh, the agriculture interest industry, it's, it's really facing un unprecedented challenges. It's quite worrying and there are limited ways to change that maintain our global food supply. Globally, the fertility of our arable lands is deteriorating, and that is linked to the fall in organic carbon content in the soil. The energy crisis has raised the cost of fossil fuels, and that directly links to production of ammonia for fertilizer, a farmer's main cost of production. And pollution from the agricultural sector is getting serious attention as it impacts water quality and air quality. This week, uh, uh, or recently, a tractor demonstration in the Netherlands um, re resisted a reduction in the number of animals farmers can, can grow on their farms because of uh, pollution. There are many uh, relevant news reports that uh, impact agriculture, not least the, the, the heat waves that have, uh, we, we've heard about from uh, Japan across Central Europe to America, there are even water shortages in Norway, where they're concerned about their hydroelectric power generation. And in America, the Salt Lake uh, is now at its lowest level. Water is a, obviously a key component of a fertile soil. And the growth of deserts and the impact, impact of uh, conflict in Ukraine is affecting the food supply and make, bringing a real risk of famine in the next year. Coal is a product derived from plants and can be a source of humates. These can be extracted and used to supplement soils, a practice that is gaining acceptance, especially in Asia, and offers an alternate use for mature coal. Even uh, as we face record coal prices, the urgency uh, from, from, this, from the um, immature coal market is, is receding. Fly ash can also be used to change the soil structure and acidity and is imported in India and China. And we'll talk uh, about some of the issues on that. Now, the price of ammonia fertilizer is directly linked to natural gas and is becoming too expensive for many countries. And if, if nitrogen is not used, the crop yields will fall. There are also other uses for ammonia that may affect the supply for farming. However, it can also be produced from coal through gasification, and we'll look at that. So, if uh, this is uh, revisiting some of these global issues, um, the the industrial uh, farming um, is is leading to issues on of monoculture and loss of diversity. Th these are the main main crops that are grown: corn, wheat, and rice. And they require about half of the fertilizers that are produced. If there's a loss of biodiversity, that means that if a plant fails, it is then difficult to replace. Uh, one of the issues at the moment is on coffee, and, and they have just discovered a potential replacement for Ar Arabica uh, beans. The fertilizers applied are only partly taken up by plants with the rest lost as pollution. And I'm going to look at that in more detail. If, if we look at what makes a fertile soil up in the top right, we, we could see 
only a little carbon is needed, three to six percent of the soil, and the rest are minerals and water, up up to twenty five percent water, a quarter water. Um, the high water content shows why drought has such an impact on yield, and certain uh, soil components help to retain water and make the soil more resi resilient to, to drought conditions. Uh, lower carbon levels also affect the bacteria and fungi in soil that are essential to how plants can use nutrients such as nitrogen. Now, the, the UN has uh, a number of uh, significant initiatives in this, in this uh, area that recognize the problems in agriculture. Um, first of all, there are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And when you look, uh, farming is related to many of these these uh, uh, development uh, development goals, but zero hunger is probably the most uh, important one, uh, and that's a target that uh, people recognise can now be met. And there are already reports um, of malnutrition in vulnerable countries, and in fact, uh, 50 countries are, are are of concern. The the UN drew attention to the issues emerging uh, with the Year of the Soil back in 2015. So really a recognition that things are going seriously, seriously awry, but only seven years ago. Green cities is about reintroducing plants and supporting pollinators. And the latest initiative is on countering sodic soils, a problem that arises with increased use of irrigation uh, to, uh, to, to water plants. C currently we're using a, an area the size of Cyprus each year uh, to sodic soils. And but uh, I'm going to explain how coal products can help. But first, I want to look at uh, nitrogen in a bit more detail. Uh, we're familiar with the problems of nitrogen oxides from combustion. So it wouldn't be too surprising that nitrogen can be a problem to agriculture as well. It's an essential nutrient. A um, hundred years ago, we could support a, a global population of about two million, two billion using crop rotation techniques but need to supply additional nitrogen to meet the food demand now for 8 billion people. In fact, we need vast amounts. Sri Lanka has been in the news this summer. It, it tried to adopt a national organic farming uh, program uh, last year, um, partly to reduce, uh, the, to avoid the costs of imports. Uh, but this has resulted in, in importing rice for the first time in its history as crop yields failed. The amount of ammonia we produce for fertilizer has risen rapidly over the last 50 years to 176 million tonnes. But uh, uh, analysis shows that we've had a, a global uh, natural demand for nitrogen of about 60 million tonnes, where uh, a bacteria can uh, handle the nitrogen we supply. If, um, if we look at the difference, uh, that means about 58% of the nitrogen we apply will be lost to pollution, a situation that has been deteriorating. The image is from the NASA program looking at algae, and the green shows algal blooms at the, uh, towards the end of 2010 in, for reverse lakes and estuaries. The latest data on the Great Lakes shown here in, in, in uh, lime green, so that uh, the uh, algal blooms are appearing twice as often compared to 10 years ago. The, the runoff from farms is partly from urea and ammonium nitrate, but also from farm animals. And, that le and the result is low oxygen levels at night, which kill aquatic uh, animals and, and uh, uh, perhaps encourage the wrong plants to grow. Ammonia release into the air uh, leads to harmful particulates linked to the growth of uh, asthma in global populations. If, if you look at uh, asthma levels from 30 years ago, it's, it's a, a much more serious situation now. But if we stop supplying urea and ammonium nitrate, we can't feed our population. Which has grown from, uh, from 7.9 to 8 billion since I started looking at this topic. 
Making ammonia also needs about 3% of our global energy consumption and has a significant CO2 emission. And so if we could use the ammonia products more efficiently, this is one way to reduce the environmental profile. The biggest issue right now, though, is it is also too expensive for farmers. And that's one of the reasons we're looking at uh, gasification of coal to ammonia. And uh, I'll move on to that next. <clears throat> uh, most ammonia is made from natural gas. But right now, the cost of LNG in Asia is over $1,000 a tonne and set to rise as Europe secures winter supplies. This means that for developing countries, the cost is becoming too high and they'll be forced to use less. And fertilizer can typically be at half of a farmer's cost under more normal conditions. In addition, there are new uses for ammonia as a fuel, and that may divert existing production, limiting supply to agriculture. I, I noted recent tests of uh, ammonia co-feeding in Malaysia. The picture shows a schematic for a gasification plant making ammonia. Coal is con converted to syngas, a, a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, and then shifted to carbon dioxide and hydrogen. There's extra purification needed in a, in a coal to ammonia process compared to a natural gas scheme, but this has been solved. The carbon dioxide is removed and a mix of hydrogen and nitrogen heated and pressurized to react over an iron catalyst to make ammonia. The, the ammonia is converted to urea and ammonium nitrate for use by farmers, with urea currently dominant, but actually less stable on farms. So we face high fertilizer cost, but when the fertilizer is applied, most is not taken up by plants. And that leads us to look at immature coal as a, as a solution. Yeah, now a key issue globally is that the um, our carbon content of soil is falling below 2%, uh, a, critical, a critical level for, um, for growing plants. For a long time, leonardite has been used as a, a natural min mineral uh, formed by the slow oxidation of lignite. Um, usually these deposits are only a few meters below ground so that they're exposed to air and then they can be extracted and used as a as a, a, a fertilizer or soil amendment product. Uh, another option is to, use, is to use peat which is about 10 percent carbon to boost the carbon level in, in soil but that's no longer considered acceptable as um, peat bogs are a key planet carbon store there's a, there's a new deposit of uh, peat discovered in the Congo, which, which we'd like to exploit for economic reasons, but would have a, a, a significant environmental impact. Whereas lignite and subbituminous coals are also suitable uh, and can be processed into soil products. What's, hap what's needed is a reversal of geological processes that convert peat to lignite. And that form then forms uh, synthetic humates. Uh, what we have to do is reintroduce oxygen to form carboxylate and carbonyl groups on the molecular surface. And you can see that in this molecule I've drawn here. It's it's not a two-dimensional uh, molecule either. It's a three-dimensional three structure that uh, traps ions in water. The humic uh, extraction, humic extraction processes can be applied to lignite, but also to uh, higher rank coals, thermal coals. But the immature coal is more easily processed, and at the moment, thermal coal is is too expensive. What what is needed is a low cost source of organic carbon to enhance soil fertility and improve the efficiency of um, uh, uh, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium use to avoid pollution. And, um, and this humic acid molecule is, it, it can, can do that for us. 
um, we're now going to look at the uh, what the benefits of uh, uh, using humic acid after agriculture. And, and first of all, it's not a nutrient in itself. It, it can uh, retain nutrients uh, in the soil that would otherwise be uh, lost to pollution, uh, but it's not a nutrient in itself. Um, there, there's, uh, humic acid can help the process that take place in soil and improve the chemical and physical uh, state of the soil. You can, for instance, uh, in, in the chemical uh, box here, you can see that the cation exchange capacity of soil can be increased using humic acid. And that tells you about the bonding of potassium, nitrogen, and phosphate, and, uh, that linking directly to the humic content. Uh, a soil rich in humids uh, can cling onto water that would otherwise be lost through evaporation. And that added cohesion also resists erosion, countering the uh, Dust Bowl America effect, a, a great fear of the 22, 2022 heat waves that we've seen around the globe. But I, I think the key finding is that the higher efficiency of nutrient use uh, from humids, uh, and I show some, some figures here, what this means is that we need to add less fertilizer as a greater proportion of what we apply on the field will be used. So that addresses the nutrient waste problem and also reduces farmers' costs. Improving the soil allows bacteria and fungi to, to thrive, and, and that leads directly to uh, uh, better crops, especially for um, crops with a high water content, such as fruits and salads. If the soil already has a carbon level of more than 2%, then the benefit is more limited because you're, it already has, has these properties, but it will be more robust under stress conditions such as drought. So if we uh, look at how we make humic, uh, humic products from, uh, from lignite, there's, there's a number of uh, methods. The, the, um, the industrial uh, method is to extract lignite in a liquid form using strong alkali, such as sodium or potassium hydroxide, and then uh, optionally nitrating that to introduce nitrogen into the molecule using a nitric acid stage. But there are other ways. Uh, Novihume treat uh, lignite with pressurized air and ammonia to make a nitrated lignite that avoids wet chemical chemistry and uses the entire lignite feed. It does need some ammonia though. There are microbial treatments that make a humid and natural gas product stream. And that's gained renewed attention in the US giving the desire to use the lignite deposits that previously would have gone to a power station, but also because gas prices there have risen by a factor of four as, as, we've, as we've seen right around the world. The microbial technique can be applied to a wide range of coal, including Wyoming's subbituminous stocks. Uh, there are other methods too. Uh, hydrogen peroxide oxidation uh, makes a higher presence of functional groups, so uh, can uh, hold more um, uh, nitrogen ions, phosphate ions, and nutrients. And uh, ozonolysis, which we've encountered in uh, NOx reduction, can also be applied as a, as a more intense oxidation of lignite. Um, and the cost of that will come down to electricity charges. The dominant method, though, is alkali extraction. And that industry is now focused in India and China. US uh, lignite mined in North, North Dakota may be exported to India for processing to humids. And that's where the market is growing more, most rapidly. Now, apart from uh, humic acid uh, improvements to soil, there is also the option to use fly ash. Uh, we, we reported in uses of fly ash uh, a couple of years ago, and the main use is to change the properties of concrete, swapping uh, Portland cement for fly ash. It, it directly reduces the carbon footprint of concrete. That's already widely practiced in China, 
and it's ad being adopted in a larger scale in the West. Uh, a consortium of 17 companies have just announced their intention to su substantially increase fly ash use this way, even as the production of fly ash is falling as we withdraw from coal power. The micrograph image shows glossy ash particles, most single, some fused aggregates, and also senospheres, hollow, hollow shells that, that make up the, the fly ash that we can use. Now, although construction is a dominant use, about 20 million tons, which is not insignificant, are applied in agriculture in India and China. If I has, is, is a key difference from pumic substances, as there's hardly any carbon in it, and so it has less direct biological effect on soil. But there are chem chemical and physical benefits. For instance, if, if, it's, if it's an alka alkaline, uh, it can be used to neutralize acid soils. And uh, the, the ash for, but one of the problems is that the ash forming process concentrates elements uh, that, uh, that are originally present in, in the coal by a factor of about eight. And while many of these are useful micronutrients, uh, if, if there are high uh, levels of unwanted elements, then that increases the risk of uh, biotoxicity. And uh, that, that has to be managed. Uh, perhaps by the frequency of ash use on, on a soil and the selection of the ash in the first place. Now, ash also affects the structure of soil as particles are smaller than sand, and that leads to improved aeration in the soil. And uh, calcium can also help resist erosion by enhancing the aggregation of soil, because as, as soil is converted to almost, almost a dust, then it's easily blown away. Fly ash can also combine well with uh, manure to provide a soil amendment nutrient mix and counters acidity of animal waste and can even absorb some harmful cont contaminants. So it, 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 has, it has got some valuable uses, but it, it, it doesn't improve uh, soil, soil health as humic products can. So it, just to reflect on, on some of these things, the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goal of Zero Hunger was always ambitious, but we are further from achieving that this year due to a, a number of factors that have come together at once. The, the conflict in uh, Eastern Europe, drought uh, affecting a, 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 large, uh, a large part of the Northern, he Northern Hemisphere and reducing yields, and the steady loss of fertile lands that uh, is especially evident in, in Northern Africa. If, if there are now concerns over 50 countries' ability to feed their populations, uh, while populations continue to rise. The high ammonia price is linked directly to natural gas, and f uh, fertilizer now exceeds half a farmer's production costs. The situation for, mar for farmers is set to get worse if ammonia is used extensively for power generation, and competing for capacity, and that ammonia is sourced from a very expensive uh, LNG. The pollution from nitrogen is getting worse, both in the air and in the water. We are adding more, but the take up by plants is falling, meaning more waste. We need a way to use the fertilizer more effectively in poor soils, and this may be critical to the long-term accept acceptability of the fertilizer industry, and not something that can really be neglected. At the same time, nitrogen is essential. It's an essential nutrient. When we look at Sri Lanka, they adopted organic farming methods, rice yields fell by over 11% in one season, and is a major contributor to the turmoil reported in, in, in that country. The rotation crop methods of pre-World War I, the basis for organic farming, can, can support about 2 billion people, but as I said, we'll reach 8 billion this November. So what can we do about these, these emerging problems? Well, demand for humic products is increasing uh, by about 10% a year in Asia. 
And when we look at wh uh, where we where we can obtain uh, the feedstocks for for making humic products, then immature coal is probably the best option. Um, Leonardite deposits are limited and known and already exploited, and the use of peat is not really environmentally acceptable at all. Humic acid isn't a nutrient in, in itself, but increasing the carbon content of soil supports the bacteria and fungi that lead to healthy plants and enhances nitrogen fixation. The humic acid molecule bonds to nutrient ions and elements, storing them till needed, and water too. This is a route to lower the amount of nitrogen that must be added, especially in poor soils, lowering costs and avoiding pollution. A, a critical level has been identified of 2%, and it is for these cases that a humic addition would be most beneficial. Above that, the effect is lessened, but it would make the soil more resilient. The best crop yield increases are seen in plants that need more water, such as fruits and salads, and that, that links to this interpretation. As drought becomes more endemic, a product that binds water more effectively will be more and more valuable to farmers and help resist erosion of their lands. Global so soil health is declining. Uh, I, I talked about losing an area the size of Cyprus to, to sodic soils uh, as a result of uh, irrigation practices each year. And one way we can counter desertification, sodification, and fertilizer pollution while supporting farmers' yields is to use coal in this way. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a route, a commercial route for um, lignite and immature coals at a time when, when we're withdrawing drawing these feedstocks from coal power generation due to their, their uh, lower efficiency. So that's um, um, the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for 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 listening, and um, uh, perhaps I could take uh, one or two questions. Let's see. Um, what the first question is: Are there any examples in the world where coal or lignite is currently being used for agriculture? Uh, well, the um, the North Dakota in the United States is um, um, one of the uh, original uses of uh, leonardite uh, in agriculture, and, and which has been used for over a, a century. And um, uh, they're now um, extracting lignite and um, sending that to India for processing into um, uh, humic products. And, and that's using these alkali extraction methods. Um, this another question. Um, hard coal has the same function as lignite for the purpose. Uh, well, um, it's possible to um, um, extract humic products from from hard coals. The, the, the yields are somewhat less, and but perhaps the bigger issues are that currently thermal coal is. Too, far too expensive, um, and um, uh, but when we look at gasification, and we are direct, directly competing with natural gas, um, then um, hard coal can be uh, is actually easier to use for that to produce ammonia than, than lignite because it is process more more efficient. Uh, right, I've got another question here. Um, if fly ash and humic products were blended in pellet form and introduced into depleted soils, would this be a method of offsetting use of fertilizers? Uh, well, um, humic products are supplied as liquid or or pellet form. In a liquid form, then it's adopted by the soil immediately. In a pellet form, then that tends to be a, 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 a longer term uh, process where the humic acid will more gradually be incorporated by the soil. And, uh, and when you apply pellets, you tend to use a, a lot more of it. 
um, so um, you know several hundred kilos per per hectare um, um, to uh, maximize the benefit of of, of that of that but, uh, but it can be a much longer term uh, multi-year process um, how to minimize mercury in using fly ash or lignite uh, well you can uh, measure mercury in the first place um, uh, for for um, for for the lignite use um, uh, for fly ash um, again you you have to measure it uh, before before use to make sure it's acceptable uh, to avoid to avoid the uh, accumulation of mercury um, is Victoria Branco good for direct agricultural use um, yes uh, for direct use there is a direct use application um, uh, uh, there's a project at the moment um, uh, looking to uh, reduce the uh, emissions from animal waste on ranches by uh, just distributing uh, brown coal on the land. Uh, that, that is then collected and combined with the uh, uric acid from the animals, it, is, it becomes um, a, a fertilizer, and there's tests going on at the moment on, on, that, on, that, on that use. Um, do you have any more information on the use of fly ash in agriculture? Uh, yes, there's, there is some. There is more information. Um, it, 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 its use has um, uh, shrunk to a large degree to uh, use in India and uh, China. Where that, that's really where the major use for agriculture is on, on fly ash. Um, uh, partly in India, it's uh, part part of the drive to reach 100% fly ash use. Um, but but as as I was saying, there there, there are benefits, and um, uh, there's a significant section on it in our uh, report from 2019. Uh, and finally, uh, what are perspectives of lignite-derived fertilizers for vertical agriculture that will probably come to change land agriculture by 2050? Um, uh, uh, ooh, a good question. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, um, it, it, yeah, a big question would be whether soils are, are, are actually used uh, for, for, the, uh, for that type of uh, culture, but, uh, but what you're trying to create is uh, a fertile growing medium and uh, carbon content is critical to that and humic, ac humic acid is critical it, it, it's the basis of soil um, you don't need very much uh, only a few percent uh, but it must be present otherwise uh, the, the uh, bacteria and fungi that are needed to um, progress nutrients from their inorganic form through into into plant use it can thrive and uh, help grow your plants so it will so i think it will have a, a change it, where we're using soil free method, methods obviously not um, so that brings me to the end of the questions thank you very much for those that, 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 that uh, found that found the questions quite interesting too and i hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation on uh, potential use of coal for agriculture. Oh, Thank, over you to you, Rebecca. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, the report on this topic will be published in the next couple of months, and the slides from this webinar will be available to download on the webinar page um, of our website. Thank you all for joining us, and goodbye. <laughs>